So how it became Elik Alphonse or Elik Alphonse, whatever language you're speaking. Well, to put it short, I was a loser in high school. Um, and that's normally the developmental years where people decide what college they want to go to. And for me, I barely passed high school and I was like super, super fat. Like I was pushing 300 pounds and I didn't have any friends really. The ones that I did have were just kind of cruddy, druggy friends. And uh, I was a big heavy drinker then. And I figured out how to make alcohol, so I didn't have a way to buy it because I didn't have any friends, but I was uh, producing my own alcohol and getting trashed and this and that. I wasn't a bad kid. I didn't get in any trouble and all this, but uh, I got in my head that I wanted to go to college to be an EMT and a firefighter. And this is where the story gets kind of interesting. Uh, so, like I said, I stayed out of trouble. I didn't really have any friends for the most part. Hung to myself and I was in class to get my EMT license, which I did get, and I was a nationally certified EMT. And so I went up to my local fire department, which was vol volunteer, and I applied. And, you know, normally cut and dry, here you go, you know, no, no issues. Um, but for me, it wasn't. And uh, looking back, of course it wasn't. I, I didn't have the hookups in the community. I didn't, didn't wasn't in the uh, click, you know that all small towns have. So they said, we're not gonna put you on because you got a bad attitude. Well, this all stemmed back to the fact that I lived with my grandmother and she was very narcissistic and wanted to maintain control. And it was my 18th birthday. And I come home from, we went out to eat sushi, some sushi restaurant with my sister. Uh, my sister had become estranged from my grandmother earlier because my grandmother had uh, pulled the same narcissistic domineering crap. And I told my grandmother, I said, I'm getting a shower. I pay the bills. I pay the bill, water bill, I'm getting a shower. Well, she called the cops on me. And then even the cops were like, dude, you just, just when it comes to these situations, just tell them, call the cops and don't say anything else because it just makes it bad on you. You know, typical narcissism stuff. Well, it so happened one of the police was part of the fire department and uh, he somehow ran it back. So. I ended up being the only kid in my college course who was not able to join their volunteer fire department. And the thing is, looking back now, everybody has their run-ins with the cops. You know, everybody. It doesn't matter, you know, who you are. You've had a run-in with the cops in some way, shape, or form. And so I said, okay, whatever. And I was really upset, obviously, but I, I didn't lash out or do anything. What good would that do? But uh, I tried to continue with the course and reapply to the fire department. But I noticed the popular kids that I was in high school with were getting hired on the fire department. And they told me sometime later, hey, we decided to give you a chance. Come up here and we will give you a chance. Well, they said they would call me that weekend. Waited around, waited around, waited around. The call never came. Now, looking back now, I know why they did that so that they knew that if they got rid of me completely, that they could say that I never actually showed up to, to be on the fire department. So they, were, they would free themselves of any legal burden. You know, it's a 10 against one, whose words who. And I went on to work EMS and stuff for a time, uh, some adjacent town and EMS, it was okay. It didn't pay good. It paid $8 an hour when I did it. That's for an EMT. And EMS was just as clicky and just as crap. I ended up working for a bigger town and they just absolutely run me into the ground, uh, staying awake for 24 hours straight. Um, you know, typical EMS crap for smaller EMS. I don't know if it's that way for big companies. I think a big company, they just kind of be like, do your job or get fired. But you know, these smaller companies, very clicky, very uh, close knit. And I ended up getting hired on the same fire department that had uh, initially denied my application to volunteer on the fire department side of things as on the ambulance side. And what's interesting about that, I worked two days and we had a bad call. I, we come back, I'm sitting at the table collecting myself. It was bad. And uh, this paramedic comes out and says, uh, you can go home. I look up, I'm like, seriously? You can go home. You didn't know where anything was on that ambulance. Keep in mind, it was my second day. So I 
uh, got up. I didn't, I mean, I wanted to cry inside, obviously, you know, when you see your career circling the drain, you're just full of dread as to what to do next. And I left. And in the meantime, I had gotten, the, the fire department side had swapped hands and I'd gotten hired is because they needed manpower. What are you going to do? I'm here. That's, that's ultimately how I became a firefighter was not because I was particularly wanted, but because uh, there was a vacancy and they had to fill it somehow. And I was a firefighter for quite some time, a couple, four, couple, four years. I was okay. Um, a whole lot of pride. And I'm not a big thing on pride. I just, you know, do my job, go home, forget it. You know, not, oh, look at me, this great fire fight. No, I, I wasn't a good firefighter. I, I fought some fires, um, you know, internally of houses and stuff. I did, went through all the motions, but, you know, it just a, after having to go through that much trouble head on, it just it really wasn't worth it anymore. And then I started to see the bigger fire departments and stuff. The vacancies were always filled by, of course, the, the direct kids or cousins or family friends, stuff like that. So I'm like, well, that's not going to happen uh, within any given area. I mean, you have 200 applicants to two spots and then... A, a kid of a firefighter gets it? Come on. I mean, the odds are just not in your favor. It's just not going to work out most of the time. So I worked EMS a little longer in other companies, and that fell apart. Um, but EMS was actually my part-time job. I was a truck driver for uh, part-time as well. and I, I shared some moderate success in truck driving. Um, didn't really like being away from home all the time because uh, it just sucks living in a 6 by 6 space with... Uh, it's maybe more like 12 by 6 space with nobody except your co-driver. And you will fight with your co-driver because no matter how well you get along with somebody, when you're that close to them all the time, uh, you, you little things tend to really tick you off. And truck driving was moderately successful, but uh, in the end, I kept truck driving and EMS, fell, EMS and fire fell by the wayside. And now that I'm estranged from my uh, my home province, I'm about thirty something hours away, um, very far away from my family and stuff. And at twenty seven years old, I'll be twenty eight this year. I'm just now starting to live life. You know, I uh, I used to have a lot of depression, a lot of anxiety. I mean, I grew up with a narcissist. Uh, was bullied for being. 300 pounds. I'm skinny now. And now life is really, really good now. Uh, just simple things, right? Like, um, we have terrible snow and cold here. And I, I'm i completely unfazed by it, it seems like. Oh, hi, honk. I'm completely unfazed by it. Uh, it doesn't really bother me very much. I, it's not a big chore to get up and go shovel the drive or to clean the house, you know? And my, you know, my job now, I got part-time jobs and things, but you know, primarily as a content creator, uh, I have to live a good life. I have to do fun things or else I don't get the views. I, you know, I don't get paid. So my message today to you guys is, is uh, if it feels like there's no way out, keep going. Because when you hit rock bottom, the only place you can go is up. And I spared you the, uh, the typical cheating girlfriend story. So nobody wants to hear it. Everybody's experienced it. So go ahead and subscribe and like this video. See you now.